Thompson Twins, hold me now. BBC Radio Stoke, and at this time we talk sport. Uh, of course, you've heard of all sorts of sports over the last few months. So we've got martial arts, team, individual sports, water sports. Um, we last night talked about volleyball. Today, uh, again, it's another sport that tends not to get an awful a lot of coverage, uh, as uh, many of the sports that we've touched on over the last few months. Trampolining. Um, Louise Finney is head coach at Stoke Elite Trampolining Club, and you've uh, been running across town and you've been trying to get out <laughs> of queues on the roads to get here. So well done. For your Thank you. Tenacity <laughs> in getting here. Yeah, one of those nightmare days on the roads, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Avoid the M6. Yeah, that's oh what dear. I've learned. Oh, well, know, it's not good at the best of times, is it? So uh, you've been trampolining for a good while, I gather, and before that your mum was into trampolining yes i um started trampolining when i was about nine or ten right. um went along to some coaching sessions that my mum used to run they were originally at bradwell high school um, and she set up a club there many years ago and um yeah loved it really mm. from the start mm. and my mum used to compete for great britain so wow. that's how it sort of fell. Wow, is she still trampoline. involved in trampolining then? Um, up until last week, yes. Um, she's been trampolining pretty much her whole life. And I can Gosh. imagine that although she's not now directly coaching, I can't ever imagine her not being involved, to be has, honest. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether this is a silly question or not, but has trampolining changed much over those years? Yes, a lot. Has it? Yeah, mainly like any sport due to equipment changes. So years ago, you know, the trampolines were much harder um, to bounce on, yeah, um, so yeah. to speak, and now they're very bouncy. So you get a lot more somersaults. Get more lift. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. So the ceiling heights needed to go up around the country you don't in think a lot about of places. That, you? Yeah, you don't think, particularly if you're in like a village hall or something, you've always done it there and yeah. then, then the trampoline gets bouncy. Yeah, yeah that hanging was, onto the rafters. Absolutely. It was one of the reasons why we ended up moving from Bradwell because yeah. I was touching the roof and I never forget the first time my fingers touched and it was very scary because you're used to being up there and not feeling anything around you. So we moved, um, my mum moved the club over to Fenton Manor um, and then we then separated as a club and went competitive and we moved to Trentham High School. So that ceiling height now is just about serving us wow. OK, yeah. You, know, you, don't, you don't think about that, do you? you no, know, no. You think about staying on the thing and not falling off, but you don't think about hitting the ceiling on the way up. No, let's hope they don't develop Goodness. any bouncier trampolines so, in the short term. So, I mean, your mum must have some stories then if she competed for, for, for Great Britain, you know, in trampolining. Yeah, 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 many. I remember seeing a picture of her as well with a leg and cast, just still somersaulting on the trampoline something that you certainly wouldn't be allowed to do now so she used to lock herself in the cupboards at the high school and trampoline away and uh, wow. yeah so, I mean yeah. have you picked up any injuries in your trampolining then? I, I, it was actually the reason why I stopped competing um, because yeah. I, I had an injury and then I sort of lost hope really in trying to progress any further than what I had got so put all my enthusiasm and passion into the coaching side. So was it like career ending for you then? then he, he, well yeah but I wouldn't say I had an amazing career on the trampoline I was nowhere near as good as my mum. I was competing at a national standard but nowhere near sort of an international level. But you, you do hear of athletes don't you that they have one injury and that's it they have to call time on their, their competitive Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately yeah. because I'd been coaching alongside training um, got stuck into the coaching side mm. and developed my own squad and had quite a lot of success with that early doors which really gave me the impetus to carry on and keep driving forwards right. and right. yeah it's been wonderful stay yeah. with us louise finney is my guest uh, from uh, stoke elite trampolining club but uh, talking trampolining between now and seven let's just get an update on the roads so louise can testify it's pretty busy on the m6 this evening let's get an update from adam crowther now Around Blythe Bridge, the A50 is still looking quite busy. There's a broken down vehicle just around the Mere Heath Blythe Bridge roundabout, just near to Grindley Lane. Now, it's also spilt a load of oil across the road. So at the moment, you can only just about squeeze by, I'm guessing, at the scene. So do expect a bit of disruption around there on the A50 up towards Blythe Bridge. No problems on the A500 now, just a little busy from Western towards Junction 16 and not seeing any major delays on the motorway. If you see a problem, of course, you can call us 01782 208 008. Get the latest online, bbc.co.uk slash stoke. BBC Radio Stoke. I'm with Louise Finney from Penkel. 
See, I had a ginger nut biscuit before uh, talking, and uh, now I can't talk for a moment or two. Uh, yeah, Louise, we went down the wrong way. Uh, you should never eat and talk on the radio at the same time. It's not clever. Uh, Louise Finney's from, uh, from Penkel. She's the head coach of Stoke Elite Trampolining Club. And um, you've been involved with trampolining since you were sort of nine or ten. So I'm assuming that was when you were at school. And is it something that is done in schools, trampolining, very much these days or, or not? Yeah, um, a lot of schools are a bit hesitant to coach trampolining because of the mm. nature of the sport. It's not sort of one of the dominant sports that you see in a lot of schools. So less so, I think, than it used to be, to be honest, looking yeah. at it. However, we're sort of hoping to change that a little bit around Stoke on Trent. So there's a programme which is run through sport across Staffordshire, which can generate funding for satellite clubs. And we've set up two recently, um, one which started three or four weeks ago at the Excel Academy, which was Holden Lane. And we've set All up right. a trampoline in there and they've got a nice setup going. And my business partner, um, Kate Lawton, runs that on a Wednesday. And then at the end of October, we've now got um, grant available to us to run the same sort of programme at St Peter's Academy. And is that because trampolines are expensive? I imagine they are. Yes, and also the qualification to be able to deliver trampoline in right. as well. Um, it's not really one of the dominant qualifications that you get within the teaching spectrum. So you I, tend to get football and netball yeah. in your traditional sports. Well, you know? I, you know, I remember doing trampolining when I was very young at school and it just whichever PE teacher was rotated on would do it. It's like, yeah, get yourself on, try yeah. not to fall off and that that's was it. about it really. <laughs> yeah, things have changed a little bit. Yeah. I think health and safety's kicked in and it stops yeah. a lot of that. So unfortunately, that's the, that's the downside of it all because it's meant that a lot of children haven't actually experienced yeah. trampoline. Whereas years mm -hmm. ago, you know, I talked to a lot of the parents and they'll all be able to tell me a tale about them being on the trampoline and bouncing around at school, whereas it's less so nowadays. Yeah. And yeah, the trampolines are very expensive. You know, you're looking at nearly £7,000 for a trampoline Gosh. Yeah, Gosh. so, you know, hence why we're always fundraising as a club. Yeah, and you mentioned grants and things. So, uh, you know, is it... Oh, it's never easy to, to try and find money from, from different bodies and what have you, but, you know, is there stuff out there that you can approach and, and, and try and get help with? Yeah, I mean, we've got a wonderful committee who've been fabulous over the last yeah. few months particularly, trying to source out funding that's available to us because unfortunately from a council perspective they're really limited with their funds and we have to look elsewhere so Sport England and like I said Sport Across Staffordshire um, have been able to help us source different funding um, so this satellite club has enabled us to go in there and that's sort of branching out to another 40 plus children and getting them engaged in the sport and then we can link in as a club if they wish to pursue it any further and progress right. um, and it helps being so successful as a club because obviously the more successful you are as a club the more likely you are to get grants so it's been really good are there different i would imagine you know obviously if you're new to it you know you're a beginner you're using the same kind of kit that the intermediate and the professional guys are using as well i mean the different standards of trampoline or yes there are yeah right. they're, they're similar right. um but it's called the webbing so on the trampoline bed mm -hmm. there is like webbing and and basically if it's thick the webbing it's less springy right so, so you don't end up yeah so you don't end up on the roof, on the um, roof yeah. so yeah so a lot of schools don't have sort of the international <laughs> yeah. webbing beds but right. yeah it's uh they're still a lot bouncy than they used to be even you know the recreational yeah. trampolines so well, you you said that um like your mum you went into trampolining and, and you know competitively as well yeah um, and got to the national level is that right yes yes i can okay. used to compete at like what was like a national c standard wow so and, and tell and me about that then i mean we, we, well, it just means that, you know, you're sort of, for your age group, you know, now, you know, sort of top 40 in the UK relative to your age, and you'd compete all over the UK. So I remember doing a competition in Perth, Scotland, that was a trek, and yeah. um, the national finals that were in London, and they were all over the UK. So you'd compete against clubs across the United Kingdom, as opposed mm. to when you're regional, you just compete against the West Midlands. And that was great fun, and um, was doing really well, and had qualified to move up to like what was Fig B, you know, the grade one standard, which yeah. was the highest level. And then that's when I had an injury and that sort of put an end to me competing really that year. And so all my focus since then and has been all about coaching. So did you have to then go off and retrain them to get coaching badges and things? Well, or? I'd already started. Um, so whilst I was training, I was already doing some coaching. So yeah. it was just a case of progressing as a coach and getting more and more qualifications. So my mum was a really good mentor and eventually I ended up with someone who was in the Great Britain squad so when we went off to the training camps, I had access to all of that information, wow. which was invaluable. Um, and you sort of learn with your performers, really. And then, you know, over the last 
I'm getting how old I am now, 34, so what's that, 17 years? Oh, Lord, <laughs> that makes me feel very old. So <laughs> the last 17 years of sort of coaching, you know, my, my, my coaching level has progressed yeah. to as such that I can now coach internationally. Uh, do you get as much satisfaction in seeing some of the youngsters come up and, uh, you know, and, and train and work hard at, at their trampolining and go on to the next level? Yeah, more. I get more from more, that. Yeah, yeah, which I think is why yeah. I've stuck at it so much because I, when I used to look back, I, I loved performing, but I was a quite nervous as a competitor um so once i you know got a grip of the coaching side i then realized actually i'm much more effective as a coach than i was a performer and um, watching the kids coming through and progressing you know over the years has just been amazing there's nothing quite like it right. you know when you love your sport and you can see kids loving it just as much so uh, when you go into tournaments and competition then yeah how, how is it scored is it down to the the turns, the twists, the, the somersaults, how you land, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it can be a bit complicated right. to someone who doesn't really know what they're watching. They just see people just, bouncing. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's what we get. People will say, oh, well, you know, what's difficult about trampoline? Until they get on the trampoline, and then they can't <laughs> stay hard on. hard work, yes, I'll tell it you is. that. <laughs> I'll um, tell you what, um, and I know this... Trampolines in, in back gardens have become quite popular these days. And I, I haven't got one, but my, my brother's family, they've got one. And I can last about five minutes before I'm out of puff on that thing. Yeah, that's yeah. the reason why we have a lot of kids coming to us, because the Fitness. parents are terrified over the children in the back garden right. doing so, yeah. teaching themselves, self-taught trampoline, yeah. and that's who we watch out for. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, when they get to competitions, there's essentially um, five judges who will um, subjectively judge you um, on, you know, your neatness, really, okay. and, you know... Like a gymnast when yeah, they fall, absolutely. come off the bars or the horse and how yeah. they land and stuff like that, right? And then you also get a difficulty as well that goes alongside that. So the more difficult skills you can do, the higher your tariff, and that gets yeah, added on to all your sort of form scores. Right. Um, and then that gives you an overall score, which then places you. And do you go into a tournament with a routine that you will stick to, or will you change it when you're on... <laughs> On the, on the, the you don't want to change it. <laughs> and what I'm saying is, oh, that was a, that was a, a good a good bounce. I'll do an extra somersault here, no, or an no. extra twist here. Or, so it's very much you, you know what you're doing when you go in. Yeah, absolutely. You stick to a routine. Yeah, you right. get ten. 10 skills okay. in a routine so you have like a set routine which everyone performs which is pretty much the same across the board and then you have a voluntary routine which you then construct together with your coach right. and that's where your tariff gets added on and you practice and practice and practice absolutely yeah repetition right. and right. um and then you know it only ever gets changed if it's gone wrong so oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it's going wrong quick put something together in your head so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. fortunately very rarely happens we talked a lot about youngsters getting into trampolining mm. what about older people is it still something that they can do yes um it, we do have quite a lot of requests of adults i just <laughs> don't think that they realize the fitness that's involved oh, sometimes and we do have quite a lot yeah. of parents who will ask to get on the trampoline and uh, have a good bounce but yeah. yeah it's something that we've just we used to run adult classes and it became very difficult you know with adults with their lives and the children yeah. so we're running adult classes again from the end of january so we're starting adult classes at fenton okay. manor so it really is good fitness you know oh it's brilliant once you've done yeah. a few star jumps on one of those things you know it don't you yeah really? absolutely your core and your abs you get up the next day and you can't sit up when you haven't been on yeah. for a while so yeah yeah I can no imagine. it's brilliant fun so i get that you you've got a couple of spaces on a on a couple of open days that you've got coming up yeah um the club is expanding me and my business Partner have just taken over from where my mum's been coaching for mm. quite a long time, which is based at Fenton Manor. We're primarily based at Trentham High School and we run the competitive side there. Well, we're there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, oh, Sundays. Really? Gosh. Um, and then at Fenton Manor, we're now taking over classes and they run on a Tuesday and Thursday. It does take over your life then, doesn't it? Yes, it has a little bit. And I also yeah. teach as well alongside no that. Worries. So it's busy, right. busy. But yeah, at Fenton Manor, we've got um, half a dozen spaces available next week. So we've got um, Tuesday, which is um, a 6.45 start, and Thursday, which is a 5.45 start. So okay. ages four upwards, if anyone wants to come oh. along, have a go, let us know. Yeah. Go on the website, Stoke Elite Trampoline Club, have a Google okay. and yeah. uh, see, check us out, you know, and then come along and have a go. And then we've got, like I said, half a dozen spaces if they enjoy it and they want to do it regularly. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So we'll get the website address again in a moment or yeah. two. Um, and and it, I assume it's the type of sport you can take up at any time as well, isn't it? You know, as you say, from the very young to somewhat older people yeah I, yeah absolutely i mean yeah. there is the competitive route but then and the main body of our club is actually the development recreational yeah. side you know because right. that's where everyone starts off anyway in sport mm. they all start off just doing it for the fun of 
you know, the love yeah, of, of the course. sport. Yeah. And then if you enjoy it and you want to do more. But yeah, it is something that you can do at all ages. Yeah. But it does tend to be mainly focused on the children, mainly because a lot of adults get off and can't walk very well the next day. Yeah, well. <laughs> achy joints and achy muscles. Yeah, and <laughs> absolutely. Did it help with uh, London 2012? I mean, I speak to so many people that, that come in here and they say that, you know, um, their sport was very much underrepresented and then something like that comes along and all of a sudden everyone's got this great interest in it again. Yeah, I think some of the gymnasts, not just from trampolining, but, you know, the likes of Lewis Smith and Beth Tweddle, yeah. just getting, you know, that sort of celebrity stage. They were pin-ups, weren't they? Yeah, they, they really were. I mean, yeah. when we were down there during the Olympics, there were massive, great big posters and hoardings and whatever with their pictures on. Yeah, huge. So then yeah. when a child looks at gymnastics, they then see there's so much more to it than just mm. what they've seen in the traditional artistic gymnastics. And um, Kat Driscoll, who went to compete for Great Britain at the London 2012, fantastic ambassador, you know, real professional athlete as well. And, you know, the kids absolutely love her. So mm. she's a bit of a celebrity in the trampolining right. world. Right. Um, so, yeah, we had an awful lot of requests for people to come along and um, have free Olympic Open days as well. And we had quite a lot of people turning up for those, come and give, you know, different sports a go. So it was great for all sport, really, mm. London 2012. You know, yeah. it was fantastic. Brilliant. So. Brilliant. OK, well, we wish you well with the, with the club and its success. Thank You've you. got open days and things and what have you. You mentioned the website so people yeah. can check you out. What is it again? It's If you Google Stoke Elite Trampolining Club, it'll come up and on there you'll find all the information new classes and all the classes we've run and all our contact details so you know please come along if you fancy about yeah brilliant great fun great excellent thanks for coming in thanks oh, for thank braving, you for inviting me the traffic and yes. what have you, you know you sort of stressful driven away to get here so <laughs> yeah uh, you need to go and have a bounce on a trampoline to sort of calm down <laughs> That's and sort of it, relax a bit now. <laughs> cheers thank you Louis. thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. indeed uh, if you missed the website address we've got it here as ever you can get in touch with us and we'll pass it on 01782 208 008 is the number. This is ABBA, the winner takes it all. <laughs>